All right, welcome back, y'all, for another episode. Uh, today's a bit unique in that uh, I and the whole family and several members of different households of our family all have the influenza. So I can't fly in the real world. My eyes, I can't move them a lot. Some ocular pain, but I can record this video. I can go fly here and we can talk about some important stuff. So today, uh, we're going to be going from uh, Gisborne in New Zealand out to Rotorua. I don't know. You let me know. Should take about 28 minutes, give or, uh, give or take. Of course, I'll be cutting a lot of the boring stuff out, so it'll be a little bit quicker. Uh, let's get into it. Very peaceful, small little airport. You know, this is the kind of flying that I don't get to do, so this is the kind of flying that I love to do here. Uh, just a gorgeous airplane, the Black Square Beechcraft, the Baron G28 pressurized, so it's a turbocharged aircraft. Extremely well modeled, very complicated aircraft, and uh, just a ton. A ton of fun to fly. <laughs> so, I'm uh, sporting the uh, honeycomb setup here, and I've mapped all of my switches to this aircraft. If you'd like to have a good experience with the honeycomb, that's how I'd recommend you do it. Uh, make sure you map everything precisely to the aircraft. That's the best way to go about it. And uh, I had my magnetos up over here on both, so they... Uh, the realistic thing here called uh, clear prop. We're not quite there yet. Got a ton of checklists to run, a ton of things to do. Of course, you can see the setup here has gotten a bit more serious. I got my charts up. It's kind of like VFR Direct, but I'm going to be using a low altitude airway. And we're going to be doing this old school. Uh, let's reconfigure the cockpit right here. Uh, we're going to be going, doing this. Boom. Old school, man. Just a thing of beauty right here. Look at that. Look at that. That's how I learned to fly. And uh, got some pretty cool uh, old style cockpits coming out. I'm going to be operating with those too. So let's begin. One of the cool things about this airplane is that it's got an incredible amount of checklists that you uh, can run. It's got all the failure checklists, a lot of that stuff, but also all the normal stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out some of this more mundane, boring stuff, and I'll check back with you uh, once we're cranking it up. All right, let's crank it up. All right, so I'd like to uh, bring your attention real quick to our location. We're over here. We're going to be taking off out of a uh, 3 2 right grass strip, short runway, because we can. And then uh, out of here is just a westerly heading. Airway is, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, 272. Let's take a look here. 271. All right, 271 outbound, be tuning into the VOR, and then we'll switch about uh, halfway through the airway here. All right, let's get going. Uh, we'll do a run-up out here, and uh, I'm going to have to run over my buddy here. I don't think I can miss him, but we'll try and see if we can. A little too close for comfort, but... Alright, welcome back to the takeoff. 3-2 uh, right was looking a bit tight. I could probably do it in 2,500 feet if there was nothing at the end of the runway. But we got some tall trees at the end of the runway. Don't have the charts to look up soft field performance. 
So I've done uh, 38, 48 here many times, no problem. So we'll just do this one. You know, make sure we don't die. That's always a good plan. That's a good uh, good thing to think about. That's actually what I'm going to be talking about on today's video. Remember the CT on the title means cockpit therapy. It's the subject I'm going to be addressing on the video. And the point of emphasis today, what I'd like to discuss is the differences between the simulator and the real world. All right, let's take off. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, so, cruise portion of flight over here. Let's go ahead and perform uh, the lean procedure with our EDM 760. This thing is absolutely awesome. So, just following the procedure. Yeah, that's pretty close to max right there. So 1650 is a threshold where you don't really want to go above that. So lean to max power is about uh, 50 below uh, peak EGT. So we'll do that. It's very delicate. The uh, control column comes in really handy for that stuff. We'll do the same procedure here on the right motor. And then in order to match these, I'll probably just match the, the fuel flow. And uh, temperature will come in second. I'd rather have the same burn so as to not cause an imbalance. There we go. 21.4 aside. And uh, smooth atmosphere so we can cruise really fast. And by really fast, I mean like really fast. <laughs> we are moving, baby. Look at that. Man, this airplane is awesome. You can get some really good cross country done going at this speed. I looked up at how much it would be to buy one of these. 700,000, I guess for, you know, maybe a good one. So, you know, a little bit on the expensive side. I don't happen to have 700 grand laying around, but there you go coming about uh, halfway point on the airway just kind of early uh, we're moving fast 12-1 let's tune that in Alright, so we're looking for the 092 radial in, which just looks about 092 radial in. We're 41 miles away, 
moving at about uh, 200 knots over the ground. So considering true airspeed, we're gaining quite a bit of airspeed, but then we're taking a hit because we got some headwind. So we're still about uh, 200 knots. And uh, that's coming in hot because we're moving fast. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so before I get busy, I got to talk to you about uh, what I was going to talk about. So what, what's the difference here between simulator operations and real world operations well and the reason why this becomes a, a, a real subject is because of the complexity of the simulator I mean mind you right here I'm not using the fancy moving map that I could be using and uh, adds an entirely whole different layer of complexity but I do have the chart up so we are navigating with real world procedures utilizing a real navigational chart operating in you know i got live weather going on here i'm not sure how accurate this is but we got that going for us and uh there's a lot to consider when you're doing the uh the simulator part of things but as is always with simulations versus reality the number one thing is that you're not going to die. And that may sound a bit silly to say, but it's not. Because the fact that you're not going to die changes everything. You can go fly a night around some mountains over here, be completely stress-free. Uh, if you're going to go fly around some mountains at night with conventional navigation systems, as, as we have here, the old school systems, uh, you better damn well know what you're doing or, or it's your last flight. There's also the whole certification and cost thing, right? I mean, your private pilot's license in today's day and age, it, it really has a great range of variability, right? If, you're, uh, if you know somebody that owns an airplane and you can fly their aircraft, that's really going to save a lot of money. But, you know, let's just say ten to twenty thousand is a good average for your private pilot license, right? Ten to twenty thousand dollars, and you've gotten um, all the high-end simulation equipment that you want, and uh, you can fly any airplane all around the world. But with the real world, you'll have multiple certifications so that you can build experience. And you have to always keep in mind every single flight that you're doing. If you don't know exactly what you're doing and if you're not thinking ahead about all the threats, the weather, the aircraft's condition, your physical condition, uh, that may be your last flight and then you're just dead. So I, I find that to be an important point to mention because simulation has really gone a long way and it truly is awesome and we do have a lot to be grateful for and thankful for and enjoy while we're doing this operation and and sometimes you know I myself am guilty of like well what the heck's the difference right uh, well there's a lot different there's a lot different those are just some of the items there to consider uh, let's see here I want to show you what we're gonna be doing not going to bother you uh, too much with the details right now, but we're going to come into this airport. We're going to land on the grass strip, 2313. Okay, running into a bit of a technical issue. My camera is overheating. I haven't had that happen before, so that's a first. So, pardon any technical difficulties. All right, so there you go. Information mic. Field elevation there is at 1,000. And let's knock out that decent checklist before we continue. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, just finished that decent checklist coming in. Before the camera cut off, I was gonna tell you, uh, we're gonna be doing this approach right here. And let's see if I can do, there we go. Uh, we're coming in over here. We're gonna uh, fly over the airport, take the 342 outbound. Take the nice slow turn, then track in on the 186. 
starting our descent there at the 7.2 mark. Keeping about 600 feet a minute rate of descent coming in and land on the grass strip. Good times. Let's do it. All right, inside of 10, we can go down tracking on the 186 to uh, 3,100. And we're coming almost there inside of 10. 3,100 is already set. Here we go, little vert speed. Let's get going. So when operating uh, high performance motors, you definitely uh, do not want to be chopping your thrust. Turbine aircraft, you're okay to do. Reciprocating engines, particularly turbocharged, you are not okay to do that. So you'd like to somehow manage your decent as best as you can. And if you uh, go really low thrust, get those cow flaps uh, checked so you're not cooling the engine down too fast. Remember the field here is out one, just about, a little bit below that, at uh, 938. So, just to keep in mind as we're going in. There's the runway. Uh, beautiful runway. We're landing on the grass strip adjacent. Speed is great. Uh, seven miles is when we can descend below. 7.2. And we're going to keep on keep on going down 1600s what we got to set in here ever speed we got just a bit behind so we'll do a thousand feet a minute here till we pick it back up Temporarily uh, chop and thrust to get a little bit of uh, drag back in and then immediately bringing it back up is sometimes something you got to do. But uh, let's not forget those cow flaps. Once that's back in there, you don't want to uh, forget. All right, so how are we doing here? Let's see. Three miles out, we should be at 1770. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Rate of decent's looking good. All right, let's just get hand flying. It's a lot easier to do uh, the small corrections. So we see uh, three red out the window. Shallow it out just a bit. Oh, cancel it off. Thought if I pressed my red button, I would have killed the flight director. It's a lot easier to fly with uh, without having bad information displayed. So flight director clear, out of the way. Luckily, uh, the Pappies are located in a pretty good spot there for the uh, grass strip reference as well. That kind of works out.
in the sim here, there's this one tall tree. <laughs> Somebody needs to come out here and chop that tree off, man. Right there. Look at that. Track those flaps. Easy on the brakes. Voila. Here we are. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, when you're operating turbocharged engines, we came in here, we were flying. Uh, get those lights. You don't want to shut them down right away. You'd like to give them a little bit of time to cool down. Uh, manual didn't specify a cool down time, so I'm sure the POH would have, the real aircraft manual would have that information. For the sim here, uh, didn't see anything. All right, after landing checklist complete, shutdown checklist complete. Airplane has been here on the ground for a few minutes, cooling down. Motors are cool, so we can go ahead and uh, shut it down. Get those scow flaps, and we'll just turn it off. Voila. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks for coming in with me on this short little flight. One of these, uh, you know, cool little flights to do. Beautiful over the mountains. With this airplane, 200 knots. My gosh. Yeah, it comes in fast. All right, so just, yeah, something to think about, you know. So what is the difference between doing the simulator thing and doing the real thing? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot doesn't matter how real it gets in here right now I couldn't be flying I'm just not fit for airborne but uh, we could do it here thanks for tuning in till next time fly safe